Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Hey everyone, welcome to Wookie Team League Week 2 cast with your live casters Korean Usher and Kix. Today we are going to start off with um, two exciting team matchups between Team Momo and... TTCCPP, no, okay. TTCPP, or the Twin Towers of Zenithal Practical, oh, I've forgotten what it is, oh no, Postmodern <laughs> Practicality, there we go. There we go, and uh, we're starting off with Game 2, because uh, the Team MLA uh, of the set 1 um, is already you know, been determined, you can't really cast that because uh, it causes errors, but uh, TTZPP got the first win, and now we're going to start off with the second game um, with IOPG versus DST Napoleon. Okay, so I know Napoleon is Terran. I'm mm -hmm. not sure about OPG. But uh, Zerg. Double check. Ah, Zerg. Okay, so starting with the TVC, some people think that's probably the most exciting matchup, but uh, I stand mm -hmm. by the fact it's TVT. But yeah, let's, we can do this. We can do this. We'll survive. We'll survive. We will survive. All right, let's do the countdown. I think it should just count down in game, shouldn't it? So, there yeah, we there we go. Yeah, that's that's why I meant. Yes. Ah, okay, Exciting. cool. All right, and on the top we start with representing Team Momo, I O P G, I no I O P Q. I'm sorry, it's a Q or G. <laughs> It's, it's a Q. It's, it's a, a Q. Q. It said G on my notepad, so I'm confused. No, okay, Q, Q. I apologize yeah, it's, for that. it's Q in game. And then down in the, well, 7 o'clock position, I guess, is the Red Terran, uh, representing the Twin Towers of Zenithal Postmodern Practicality, the ST Napoleon. <laughs> uh, good job. Good job saying uh, that name. And I and we're playing on Demon, um, which is a fairly old map, I believe. Yeah, okay, so Demian, Demian. is... Uh, oh, again, <laughs> my pronunciation is not that great. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just double-checking this, but more recently there's been a version 2.0 that's mm -hmm. come out, which is actually being used in the current ASL Team League. And basically, um, it looks like Demian as a map was only made recently. Uh, it was actually made in 2015 and was featured for the Hungry App Stars League with Kongdu. So it's it's not that mm. old. Okay. The version of the map that these two guys are playing on is 1.02 because that's the one on IC Cup. But I know a couple of people have actually played on version 2.0 as well. So if the map does appear again, uh, we Mouse probably needs to make sure he knows which version people are going to play on because there are some differences. Uh, like there's been some quite big balance changes. And we see a uh, barracks coming up for DST Napoleon representing. Um... TTZPP and Hatchery is now up for IOPQ. Uh, I believe yeah, so that is IOPQ. a 12 hatch. Yep. Yeah, they've actually gone for a hatch first. So mm. it looks like there's no eight racks or anything crazy coming out. Napoleon. Napoleon's just gonna. He's actually gonna wall off. Um, on this version, you can actually wall off the main from mm. Zerglings, and he's actually going on to gas. So we're gonna see most likely either a very early stim build or some kind of factory build. Interesting. And, and it could be a possible uh, fa a fast uh, rush with virtues and tanks and some marines or it could be a uh, more of a safe build where you want to safely expand without the fear of zerglings uh, running into your base. Yeah, so he could be going something like the uh, mm -hmm. fancy build where he just goes up to dropship right away. Mm -hmm. Or, I mean, it all depends on whether or not he starts to pull people off gas. So at the moment he's left them on gas. So, I mean, we could even see some along the lines of Two-Port Wraith. That's quite a... not a common opener, um, but mm -hmm. quite a good opener when you wall off, because the Zerg, unless he sacrifices the Overlord, isn't really going to be able to see the... Um, and a see the third hatch... Third hatch is being uh, going up in the main. Um, the Napoleon did scout it perfectly in the first time, whereas... Oh! The drone oh. just went in! Yeah, the, the wall wasn't perfect. <laughs> the uh, wall isn't perfect! Oh man. Uh, it looks like his marine's out just a few seconds mm -hmm. too late, so he's gonna trap the drone in his base, I guess. Which is and, and the drone actually oh, no, gets away too. Yeah, it just mineral walks straight through him, and uh, IOPQ will know that Napoleon's still mining the gas. He's got his factory, he did see that. 
so he's going to know to at least prepare possibly for breaks. Although Napoleon's now sending out his SCV and it looks like he's going to pop his expansion, uh, which uh, the Overlord will actually see. So, yep, and, and so Napoleon does be expand. completely in the clear here. Yeah, and then a creep colony is game going up for ILPQ just in, in case, um, in case there is a push. But the uh, so vulture is going up now. Yeah, that that sunken's more mm -hmm. to handle the first vulture. Because right. if you don't get that sunken, unless you can manage to trap uh, trap the vulture on the ramp with your drones, the one vulture can actually do a lot of damage, especially if it's controlled really well. So, yep. And Lair is going up for uh, uh, Team Momo, um, the Zerg. And I believe there is... Oh, Hydralisk! at the natural, too. Yeah, so, I mean, scouting possible mech. Hydralis are a good choice. Mm -hmm. It could be possible that he's doing this just to be safe and he will go into Mutalix. I mean, he is getting a second gas fairly quickly. Right. So we could see a Spire coming up soon after the lair goes up, I would imagine. This is true. And, and it's also worth knowing that um, right now they're both at two bases. Or going to be at two bases. And usually, normally, the Zerg will try to go for a third base to get third gas. Uh, but with this two hatch build, but with four uh, three hatcheries, is it possible that they may go for a fast lurkers? I mean, he could go for fast lurkers, but knowing that he did scout, there we go. The spy is going up in the main. The big, uh, the big oh. thing to note with uh, with Napoleon is it looks like he could actually be going for Valconic. So right now he's got his starport up. He's adding his armory, mm -hmm. which should be in time for when the race finishes. He can build the control tower, then go straight into Valkyrie to deal with any muses. And he's actually gone Vulture Mine straight into tanks. Mm. So he's going to be pretty ah. well prepared against everything. And when this race goes out, he'll probably snipe the Overlord over the natural. And uh, then he'll be able to put up a decent amount of pressure until the Spire comes out and he'll need to defend. I don't see any upgrades that's happening for the Hydro List then. So I think the focus right now is to get that Spire up. But we do see a wave that just came out of the Starport. And there might be some some uh, early harass before the Mutalist or Scourge comes out to snipe that wave. Yeah, so they'll, he'll probably be able to get about one one Overlord, but there are three, uh, oh. three Hydras there. Oh, there is the 300, and he loses the waves! Oh no! That investment, yeah, that so that is pretty... I would think that's that that's was, an early a big loss. That was a big loss early mm -hmm. on, because with... Uh, with um, I mean, he's adding a second factory, so he is going right. into mech, he's going to add his plus one upgrade. But when you go for that early race, you really want to at least scout the base, because right mm -hmm. now, he doesn't have an academy. His bunker actually looks like it's going to be blocking the commsat at his natural expansion. So it's going to be a while before he gets enough scan to realize what's going to be coming at him. Mm -hmm. uh, the mutilists have popped, or they will pop in about a second. So they're going to go straight over to his base without any form of anti-air whatsoever. He doesn't even have a Valkyrie on the way, so right. Napoleon could actually be in a hell of a lot of trouble here. Yeah, there is there is a Valkyrie that's on the way, but um, but their mutilists are already out and there is no there's no turrets. There's no turrets at the natural or the main base. Yeah, there's no engineering base. Uh, he has one Goliath, but that's not going to be enough. He's right. going to take a lot of damage here. And Napoleon pulls his SCVs from the natural to the main because they can't defend against this one... Uh, with using only one Goliath. This, this is the second Goliath, but the Goliaths are getting sniped one by one. So the Valkyrie's out. Uh, <coughs> bless you. Sorry. And I believe there's repairs happening on the Valkyrie while it's firing. Which, which causes the Mutualist to go off, to run away, because of the the last minute STV repairs on the Valkyrie. Yeah, so... Uh, sorry, I went for a cough mm -hmm. there. Uh, basically, he repaired the... He repaired the Valkyrie, which has saved him for the time being. It's going to allow him to get a few more Goliaths, but he's still in quite a lot of trouble. Right. He will get a second Valkyrie out by the time the uh, Mutas come back in. But there it is, the second Valkyrie. Yeah, so he's really done. He's taken an, enough damage as it is, mm. and it's only going to get worse. Uh, well, the there was some harass with the Mutalist right now at the natural base of this falling, but two Valkyries are up, and they they could be very effective when they're stacked together. 
They can be indeed, but the one thing that Napoleon's going to have to watch out for mm. is the Scourge, because Valkyries in high number can deal with Scourge like Corsairs can, but um, similar to Corsairs, they will die very, very, very quickly uh, to four Scourge. I think it takes two Scourge to kill each. Mm -hmm. Now, I've realized that there's no Scourge actually being produced. This, this two, the two just came out, but that's the first two. By this time, I would think there would be some Scourge once they saw the Valkyries. Yeah, so the important moves here is Napoleon's going to move his mm -hmm. vultures up. He's going to scout this third. He may even um, he may even actually snipe the lava, but I right. guess he chooses not to. He's blocking any drones from getting there. Ah, I see. So, so uh, third the... base right now is in trouble because that vulture is sitting there. But Mutilus could easily pick up those uh, vultures easily. Yeah, so he's not actually even made any mines up there. So the Mutilus are just going to be able to clear this up. The drones will transfer over, mm -hmm. and because of the scouting he's done with his Mutilus, uh, the Scourge will come in to try and snipe the Valkyries, which aren't actually protected by any turrets right now, only the Goliaths. So yeah, and the there's in a bit of a pinch. There's two more factories coming up with a total of four factories for. Napoleon, but the mutants go in into the main base where the glides are all in the natural! And they can pick up one by one! And the Scourges are there sniping! The Scourge are gonna hit the Valkyries as well, like the glides come up, but he's taken so much damage already. The Mulists are just gonna be able to fly away and they're spread nicely so they won't be uh, hit by the volleys of the Valkyries as they fly away. That was a, that was a good uh, hit and run tactic right there by IO uh, PQ. Yeah, so because Goliaths are a bit clunky, he's probably going to try and get some damage done on that as well. And if you notice, he's got the two Scourge Wing when the Valkyries come out to try and uh, to try and All snipe right. the Mutas. And they're going to be able to get one of those Valkyries, just like that. Another Valkyrie has been sniped, but I believe the HP for some of these Mutalists are getting low because of the three Valkyries. And the Goliath, who actually does have the, uh, the Goliath tech, because I saw that earlier. The, the, yeah, the that's something. <laughs> They've got the range upgrade. Uh, it looks like he's actually going to push out with the Goliaths and his Valkyries now. IOPQ doesn't have too many units, but he should have enough to at least defend his third base. Mm. And now he knows he's against Mech, not that he'd know right. before, but he's And the fourth hatchery is, is going up for IOPQ yeah. at the 3 o'clock base. And he needs to defend this. He needs to defend his his holdings. Um, right now, Napoleon has not decided to push up yet, because there's not enough tanks, too. There's only one tank up, total. Yeah, so with this build, you're going to have a... I mean, he's probably stayed on Goliaths a little bit too long, considering mm. he's been getting lots of Valkyries. There's a lot of Scourge out now, Ooh. and if IOPQ takes the right fight, mm -hmm. he'll be able to snipe the Valkyries, and that's a huge investment to lose. Napoleon's going to have to do his best here to make sure he doesn't... And he goes in, once again! The, the Goliaths are all... Most of the Goliaths are in the natural, and they're just sitting there waiting. So the yeah, Scourge so goes, goes in. Scourge. Once these oh. go down, uh, the all the Valkyries don't go down. Trouble. But there are a lot of Goliaths, I have to say. A lot. There's a lot of Goliaths, but they don't do too much damage to the Mulus. He's actually got plus one carapace on his Mulus as well, which will help against the uh, plus one attack of the Goliaths. Mm -hmm. But now he's lost his Valkyries, it's going to cost a lot to go back into them. Yeah. He's going to keep producing them, but he won't really be able to get to that critical mass that he needs to be able to deal with the Scourge and the Mulus together. I mean, it looks like OPQ's jumping in, killing a few SCVs every once yeah. in a while, and then pulling back. He's not lost too many Mutalisks, and more than a while back at home, he's building a huge Hydra He, he is building a huge Hydra list. I'm looking at him right now. This, there's a lot of Hydra lists. I'm counting 37 Hydra lists total right now. Now, the scary thing for Napoleon is he has a lot of Goliaths which will help him against the against the Mulus, but the big problem he's going to have without the Valkyries that he's lost, if he tries to push here, he could actually just get overwhelmed by Hydralisks. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have too many tanks, he's only got three of them as he pushes out. Right. He's actually splitting up his forces as well, mm -hmm. which while that works for Bio when he's got such a small army as it is, it's actually going to be quite difficult. Uh, There's a battle that's happening in the middle of the map. And earlier on, I, I saw this earlier, but there was this one Zergling that went in just to scout the army, and I think that was a really smart move because now it, it, he knows where where the art uh, when the Terran is pushing up. He's losing some Hydalus from the siege tanks, but he was able to snipe some siege tanks. His two left. He, he sniped two yeah, of them. Yeah, so he sniped two of them, and the big thing is 
you lost the Valkyrie again. So the second the mutant number comes in again, and the Hydra's come in at the same time, they're going to be able to clean all of this up. If I think you snipes the tank here, the Hydra is just going to have to play. And he, snipe, he does snipe the tank, but he loses all the mutualists in the process. But he was a, he's able to clean up all these, uh, all the tanks, all the Goliath. The, the parent army is on the retreat right now because they he just he literally just lost most of his forces. Yeah, so IOPQ has got a commanding lead on this game right now. Mm -hmm. With Napoleon losing his army like that, and the fact he's playing mech, it's going to take him a little bit to build up another wall to go and right. attack with. And he doesn't really have enough units to even take a third base right now. So IOPQ is in a very, very, very good position. He's droning up his fourth base now. He's got mm -hmm. a creep colony to make a sunken just in case there's any vulture run -bys. But even then, with only four factories, there's not really going to be much chance for... Uh, Napoleon to actually build up enough vultures to do any yeah. harass. This is true, and and the Terran does not seem to have uh, a space to to actually expand right now. You have nine o'clock with two scourges to scout. You have a zergling around the five o'clock position. The six o'clock position also has a zergling too. So right now, I O P Q actually has the map map control, checking in all the possible expansions that the Terran could make and put and acting accordingly if the Terran decides to um, to expand with their command center. Yeah, so <laughs> Zerg has got a very good position on the map. I mean, Napoleon can actually turtle up, and uh, because he does right. have one one upgrades, he's not got his science facility yet, from what I can tell. He doesn't really have the money to build it with his four mm. factories as well, so he just needs to keep adding on, uh, adding on tanks, turtle up for a bit, and eventually He'll be able to take the third and fourth, but that's going to give Zerg uh, the time to do whatever they want in the meantime, and that's going to be a dangerous position to put yourself in. Hive is going up for uh, the Zerg, and just massive, massive number of Hydralisks right now. Continuously pumping Hydralisks. We do see um, only two gases, I believe. The other two bases. Oh, there's a Vulture that's happening at the 1 o'clock position. That one virtual tiny snipe got two kills so far. Three. Yeah, so I, I think you actually built his sunken in a really weird place on that base. So I can yeah. I can understand his reasoning behind it. It's just the vulture managed to get past. Yeah. The Hydra's are gonna come in and clean it up, but the vulture has actually managed to get four kills, which is pretty good for the uh, for can the investment. No, it doesn't. But yeah, Zerg is running on two gases right now, uh, with four bases, and Scan is going up. At the one five o'clock position, so I think the Terran was able to scan that, and he does move up, move out with his tank. He got more a lot more tanks than before uh, Napoleon. He's still mining with two bases, but he does have a third command center that he want to put into the nine o'clock position. Yeah, so this was a very very dangerous move. He should have gone up on the high ground rather than going the way right. he did. Uh, luckily enough, it doesn't look like Ooh, nobody had wow. enough there to actually take advantage of the fact the tanks were on siege. But if his if his army was a little bit closer, mm -hmm. he probably could have killed the whole army there, which would have been very, very, very bad. And what is this? Is this is the flyer mound that's being uh, just been completed. So we're going to see some deployers uh, deployers uh, coming in. We got some mutilists also pumping in. Uh, a lot of mutualists and hydralists. Now the uh, the big thing about the switch into mutalists as well. Again, obviously he's going mute hydra. Right. One of the big important moments was when he sniped those early Valkyries, because what that basically means is that to get anti air, unless he goes back into Valkyries again, which is going to be late, uh, he's actually going to go into Vessels instead, because that's more important with the Defilers. Mm -hmm. He's going to be lacking on anti-air without adding Goliaths, and Goliaths, when you've only got two gas now going up to three, are quite expensive when you do need to get a lot of tanks. I mean, he's going up to three machine shops now, which means he will be able to pump three tanks at a time. And Mutual is trying to go in into the main base once again, uh, we, or about to, getting ready. But there is a Science Vessel going up, and there's going to be a and there. The Arade, Arade has, uh, has taken on the Mutalisk, but not enough to actually cause significant damage to all those Mutalisk. Yeah, so he did a really good split there to get mm -hmm. his damage or yeah. his Radiate Mutalisk away pretty quickly. 
And uh, it looks like Napoleon's going to run around with uh, Vulture still. He's checking for any additional bases. It looks like the 5 o'clock where Napoleon scanned before is actually now being taken by the Zerg. So mm -hmm. he's slowly but surely finding himself penned in. Oh, wow. The good thing is Terran does have a very, very supreme defense advantage. But every tank that uh, IOPQ manages to kill, the stronger and better his Hydralis push becomes. Uh, yeah, so we do see Zerg with... A lot of bases. Um, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just trying to count six bases. This is going up the sixth base, whereas Terry just got his third operational. Yeah, so I mean, this is a case of IOPQ is making use of the fact that Napoleon, especially because he lost so many units, can't be very active right. on the map. He doesn't have too many mines around. I mean, on the map, mm -hmm. there's only actually five mines in total. Actually, I think that's four, because the other the other one's a vulture that's idle. And uh, he's going to move in with vultures to try and do some harass. But IOPQ, as long as he defends his bases well enough, should be perfectly fine against this. And the more his bank goes up and up, uh, mm -hmm. Napoleon's going to find it even harder to keep defending. I mean. It's gonna take IOPQ probably a couple of a couple of arms to actually break deploy through. this move out. He's, he's trying to go for a push at this point, but some of the units are getting stuck at the bridge. Yes, yeah, so the, this is a, a good engagement for the Sonian, actually. Uh, he actually caught IOPQ a bit off guard. He didn't move him with his hydro. Right, enough. and the missiles so were at the three o'clock. Right. So the uh, front tanks are gonna be. Up for the Mulus, but there isn't a radiating, and it's doing a lot of damage to that. Oh, there's two of them, and he's not split them well enough. He's not splitting the uh, the, the other raid, and we're seeing, yeah, we do see a lot of mutualist damage there just by the science vessel. But there wasn't any significant push by the Terran on that, on that battle, it was just a exchange of units, uh, a yeah, bit of so attrition battle. The good thing is he kept a lot of his tanks alive. He only lost about four or five tanks, I believe. Right. And that gives him a little bit more pushing power the later it goes into the game. Uh, the more tanks you have, the harder it is to be broken. So his third base, even though he doesn't actually have that much anti-air there, is now defended perfectly fine with the few glass and uh, irradiate. Mm -hmm. He's not actually built any uh, turrets either, which could make mass drops from the 10 o'clock position actually quite good. It doesn't look like IOPQ is going to be going for that option though. They do have a lot of overlords in the middle of the map, so it wouldn't surprise me if we did see that drop upgrade coming, if it's not already upgraded. And uh, we do see that the Napoleon's main base has been mined out, so he's really relying on that one base in 9 o'clock position, because the natural is also, also almost mined out too. Whereas the Zerg has... There's bases that he didn't even start mining. Because uh, that could be something to do at, at a later point. So they yeah, so <laughs> yeah. He's actually adding more drones on just to start mining. But the big thing is, it's not so much about have, uh, mining from the bases, it's just stopping the Terran from having them. So we do see a hell of a lot of Hydralis actually going down to the tank. A really nice defense maker. So we'll keep that tank alive for just a little bit longer. No, not enough time to, to fully defend against this. Uh, he, well, he was able to defend against it. He was able to to win against this battle. But yeah, now so the question is... Zerg's gonna keep on pumping units. units. Yeah. 41 upgrades right. for the uh, Terran Max. So these are gonna be very, very, uh, very effective and efficient at taking on Hydra lists. But at the moment, outside of Radiant, there's actually no anti-air. Yeah, he doesn't have any Goliath. All the Goliaths he has died. It looks like he's gonna send the Goliaths down to this 5 o'clock base to take out the drones. But right now, that doesn't really matter for you. And this is doing a ton of damage to to uh, Napoleon because of the fact that there's no Goliath, nothing to def really defend against the useless except for the science vessel, which needs energy. Yeah, it. so I mean, he's got seven tanks here, and he's only got 11 tanks overall, so if he loses these, it's going to put him in a very, very bad position. Luckily enough for him, there wasn't more uh, Mulus alive, because he would have lost all those tanks. And that would but there was still a, a good number of tanks that was lost on that, uh, on that Mutualisk snipe. And it seems like Guardian is going to happen soon. 
Yeah, so Guardians are a really smart choice here. He knows he doesn't have too many Goliaths. Mm -hmm. He knows that he's going to be low on money because he will be my Nelva's main in this control. And he's going to have to replenish this tank count. And when these Guardians come in to his third base, these could actually be the finishing blow because mm -hmm. he needs some kind of anti-air defense there. And Goliaths on their own are actually not that great against Guardians. I mean, they can work really well, but if there's Hydra of support underneath them, the Goliaths aren't going to be able to get in there. And he's actually sniped a few of the Goliaths with the Hydra Lists. He's pushed a little bit too far forward, and the more Goliaths he loses... <laughs> and here, here uh, comes the Guardians! Here. here comes the Guardians. Uh, but there are science vessels that could easily do a raid, but I don't think that'll be enough for all these Guardians. Yeah, so I mean, he has a lot of radius, but he's going to lose a lot of tanks and stuff before. It looks like he's actually got a really nice surround with the Goliaths on both sides. So the Hydros are going to come on, on these unseen tanks and they're going to try and do what they can to take them out. There's no anti-air against them, the unit switch is happening. Uh, there's actually one Goliath there with a load of vessels, but he should probably get some Scourge to take those out. But I'm not sure he has an answer to these Guardians that are still alive. The one cheeky thing here is he can run into the uh, Dark Swarm and use that against the Zerg, that'd be very clever, but uh, in the heat at the moment that isn't something you really think of, but it looks like he will actually move one in. Now, uh, Napoleon has made a fourth base at the 6 o'clock position, but there is that one Zergling that's going to continuously harass. He's also made it very far away from the minerals. Yeah, that's true, so and that sure, position is I'm not, not the sure ideal. I'm not sure he had a mine there or something, but... Um, I think it was a Zergling. Yeah, so he's actually built quite far away. It wouldn't surprise me to see like him build another command center underneath to have it in a normal place and then fly the other one off to the uh, other base when he can take it. But there's going to be a huge Hydralis force moving down to try and take that out. And he doesn't really have enough defense over there. Oh, those three science vessels just got, just got sniped by these, those Hydralis because they were into the Hydralis uh, field. Oh, and there goes the uh, Dark Swarm again. All the Hydros are very pumped under it though, so those two tanks could do a lot of damage. But it looks like there's just too much there coming into Napoleon's uh, front here, and he is actually going to lose this fourth point, although possibly there was some kind of mine here that went off and actually. Oh no, he split up the Hydros and they got a little bit confused. And ILPQ sending his Hydros army on that fourth base! So as he tried to repair that command center, but it's not going to be enough time. <laughs> And there's the GG by DST Napoleon taking the game for Momo with IOPQ uh, now tying up with 1-1. One, one. The one very important thing to note about that is it was actually a lot closer than it looked. And uh, Napoleon did actually only have one base and the, the extra base at the bottom. Right. But the fact that IOPQ spent so much money on the Guardians meant his bank was completely empty. So if Napoleon had managed to defend against those and actually sort of stabilized and secured that fourth base, he was still in the game. And that goes uh, goes to show how quickly the Guardians can actually eat through your bank if you lose them a lot. Mm -hmm. It's uh, quite scary actually, and it's probably why they're less common. Uh, they are pretty good against mech, but you'd never see anyone really go Guardians other than like 3 or 4 to take out like a natural that you can siege from the air. Other than that, um, Guardians are pretty rare for that reason. Yeah, Guardian, so I feel like... I feel like it was just a extra... Uh, like, it wasn't necessary to, to go for Guardians, because it was already effective of, of you know, using Mutalis and Hydralis at that point, in, in my opinion. Uh, but I think Guardian, uh, Guardians are effective what they are, but... It wasn't necessary. I feel like because he had the extra resources, why not? Let's go Guardians. You no, know, it's going to do damage. Um, I know there's not going to be air that's happening right now, and I could just use the extra money for more mutualist or more hydralist, but and just go for a massive push. But you know, I could just go for Guardians because I have the extra resources. I have seven bases versus their Terran's three base. So I think yeah. in that scenario. Um, well, not only that, but. Um... The, the, there's a funny situation that can happen when you go mech, especially mm -hmm. if you go Valkyries as well. If you manage to keep your Valkyries alive long enough, if they want to switch into Guardians, you see them start building Devourers as well to mm -hmm. try and take out your Valkyries. And that's really weird because you barely ever see those units. Yeah. They're probably one of the least used units in the entire game. So uh, I would think quite Queens are less ra more rare than Guardians. Uh, Not so much Guardians, Devourers. Uh, devourers are the Zerg anti-air yeah. uh, you know, that you morph from Mutalisks. 
So. So yeah, with that, let's. Uh, I update the score is now one one. Uh, Momo taking the the second game, uh, tying up the series, and now we're going to the third game, uh, another one v one, with. Uh, do you have the the? Yep, it's hosted with the same username and password. Oh, okay. I have, to, I have to log into I, I see cup again because it locked me out. I don't know if it always.